Welcome to your magic moon message, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Peace Dealer. Shout out to the Midheaven Podcast. I think the store is still up if you want um, Zodiac shirts like this. But let's get into it. Moon is in Pisces, sun is in Gemini. Everything, and I do mean everything you have ever believed is changing regarding everything you believe to be true, okay? Belief is Pisces, thinking is Gemini, all right? Thinking about what is true. Mm. Every moon in Pisces, sun in Gemini is a game-changing shift that changes what you believe to be true. With the 30-year cycle of Kronos, of course, known as Saturn to the Greco-Romans, this brings a totality as karma always comes back around. And of course, given the last two, three cycles of this, I'm talking 95, 63, 64, and then even before that in like the 20s, Neptune was still not even close to, you know, beginning the previous cycle it took a lot of saturn cycles maybe like five or six since the last time neptune was in pisces now neptune is 29 degrees pisces making its revolution since the 1800s during the dred scott decision uh when the government was just wondering if certain colored skinned people really deserve more rights than they have and now you know or having eerily similar conversations with the unvaccinated. That was a joke, that was a bad joke. Anyway, other than that, now that Saturn is back here with Neptune, there's a totality of changing everything you believe over the next week and a half coming into the next new moon. Relative to generational narratives, belief systems, religions, ways of thought and belief, science, understanding of the metaphysical theories of not just relativity that are all getting ready to change and be thrown in the trash and made obsolete with Pluto back in Aquarius retrograding back into Capricorn since the 1700s. Okay, so this game-changing uh, facet of the first quarter that we are having, by the way, right? After the full moon in Sagittarius harvested the higher meaning of everything you think is true, it showed you the meaning of the activation of energy through the new moon in Taurus that you set in play, play, play. Okay. See what I did there? I rhymed on accident. And now that we are completing this harvest with the 270 degree Capricorn signature angle to the sun in Gemini, being trailed by Jupiter and motherfucking Aphrodite traveling with the sun, polishing your true awareness to add beauty to your words. All right. Them rants are elegant. If you're wondering why your rant is elegant and you're just speaking poetry, even though you may be spewing chaos, that's Venus and the sun and Gemini. So now this completion in 270 degree angle is bringing into a final perspective the synthesis and reasoning for why you believe what you think is true is true. And if, as the moon goes into Pisces, this is going to completely change. And this will be evidenced by that moon conjunction of Saturn that we have every 28 days. In the last 28 days, the sun was in Taurus, and before that, the sun was in Aries. So the square to Gemini is a checkpoint, and it is challenging you to take your true awareness of everything that is producing the effect of the past two months so that you can communicate what you're experiencing and what that makes you or what you think. This must align to the integrity of the system of beliefs you have set in place since March of 2023. Building Noah's Ark, the floodwaters have fallen and this bitch is crumbling. Like the world as we know it is ending. And this period with a square like this begins to change the phase of how we all ex and why really because virgo is out why we all experience what we're experiencing connecting every single belief collectively and expressing it individually through you and me 
as of course the way we perceive a shared experience is going to be different as we don't all perceive the same as we are hallucinating we're all hallucinating pisces given the metaphysical nature opposed to virgo's physical earth grounded condensing of a material solid with the moon helps you understand metaphysical mechanics and principles with saturn that you will be aware of how they're true and why they're true and more importantly what causality begins to be affected that in three months when we're in virgo season will be perfectly through analysis mastered all right so this is definitely going to reintroduce some of you to the truth of magic and why it exists but once again with such a mutable couple of planets those who cannot accept the truth will cope more with denial than ever than ever versus some of you that can accept that you are wrong it is definitely a superpower to be able to admit you're wrong because the truth shall set you free. So not, I mean, it's common to have beliefs that are delusional, that aren't necessarily real. An angle like this helps you understand what about your beliefs don't align with the integrity of not only what's real, but in a way that you can communicate truthfully. This mutable angle allows you to adjust that or maintain denial. This lets you understand beliefs that previously you didn't have the awareness to deduce were true, and now you're experiencing are true, okay? And this allows you to maintain those beliefs through what you communicate. Everything that Jupiter in Gemini is now expanding intensely as it trines Hades in Aquarius, awakening the supernatural quality of knowledge to further enhance what it is you're communicating. This is going to be very amazing for those of you who aren't fucking frauds and use spirituality as a crutch or some pop psychology conversation starter and you actually do the due diligence and work and you've actually lived this as a lifestyle and not just some trending fad. The work you've done over the years is going to spill over as now so much things you've understood through your practice and really living this that you couldn't put into words miraculously flows out your mouth like warm melted butter on a pecan sandwich i'm just making shit up at this point like i don't know what a pecan sandwich is but it will flow through your mouth jupiter is effectively expanding the vocabulary over 12 years worth of experience that has expanded your mindset towards more of a realization of who you have always been. That was poetry, those are bars right there. So with that being said, when you look at the mutable magic axis, it perfectly explains the scientific method, which is why it is pointless to deviate science from magic. They are both one and the same. A magician applies the scientific method to work on spells the way a scientist works on a scientific method to prove their theories. A program is a magic spell. And you might have been caught up in a semantic battle through people who have wished to monopolize the truth, whether through religion or the science cult, all right? Or delusional, fanatical, new age, spiritual bullshit. It's all bullshit now. So when you of course have a belief that's your imagination, right? And then you experiment that belief. That belief is Pisces. You experiment that belief in Gemini. You analyze those results in Virgo, and then you interpret the meaning in Sagittarius. Where does that interpretation lead us back to? Pisces, the belief. So if I believe that I'm a handsome man and I can talk to any woman I want out here because I'm sexy chocolate, then I'm going to experiment this. I'm going to start talking to all the fine ladies. I'm going to be like, what's up, boo? How you doing, boo? What's good? You, want, you know you want some of this? You know you want some of this? And then I analyzed, wow, two of those women looked at me like I was weird as fuck, but everyone else was just like dripping over me because it's me. Like, come on. And so I interpret that that means I'm clearly a sexy ass motherfucker. Okay. And now that brings me back to my belief of maybe I am one of the sexiest motherfuckers alive. 
all right? If maybe in my interpretation, now maybe that deviates from what I believe, I change my beliefs, I experiment that belief again. You do this on a daily basis, whether you know that's what you're doing, it's the feedback loop of reasoning, okay? Where you have the thought in Gemini, the analysis in Virgo, the interpretation and then the belief, the meaning, the reason, all right? It's a natural archetype that, you know, didn't exist just because people just made up the zodiac sign. The zodiac sign is an archetype to reflect what happens uh, regardless of time passage. It is just an axiom at this point. So we are understanding the metaphysical and collective beliefs around our awareness that in Gemini we can experiment with. And with Venus here, it's definitely polishing and wrapping up beautifully these packaged words in a way that will blow people's minds and trigger them to no end now the moon that will be making a 300 degree 300 not 30 three it's not 60 300 degree aquarius angle to uranus and mercury conjuncting in taurus is going to align with this revolution of your mind and brain processing at so much more at an innovative grounded level that the experience you will feel in Pisces connects a whole lot of, once again, metaphysical nature that you cannot perceive beyond the electromagnetic spectrum that connecting with Taurus will ground in ways that make so tangible. Once again, it reminds you of aspects of magic that deviate from the fantasy science fiction picture that you're conditioned to see it as. As many of these mechanics have more grounding in reality than many scientific principles and theoretical models that have been shoved in your face since a little kid. And with this sextile, this will prepare, of course, with the later conjunction of Neptune to overdose you on laughing gas. This disassociation is needed in order to sponsor more complex awakenings, which could be very traumatic, as many people around the world are having to see foundations with which they stood on crumble as they were never really true, versus people who have planted and maintained foundations with proper values that as this wind is blowing, it's not shaking them either which way because they're not weak, stupid little bitches. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this transit. It's going to be a lot of people lying, more than normal. It's going to be a lot of people lying like they have to cope desperately to just accept the fact that everything they basically knew about maybe someone or people or a group they've idolized has always been a lie, all right? And this will really show you the nature of people who can accept a loss accept being wrong myself included this is going to affect everybody in many different areas and perspectives and to be like hey i was wrong it's time to change of course if you write you write you're really like i told you bitch but say that for i told you so season we gonna we gonna run it back okay uh, shout out to libra season okay so with that being said be prepared not so much for a reality check, but another game changer. Last one was last week. We have one this couple days, and then we're going to have the final one, the final two next week. This is going to set up the new moon in Gemini. In completing this cycle, we are, with this Capricorn aspect, coming into a broad realization and understanding of the results of your belief. Because if you're operating with an assumption or an idea then after you understand the meaning of that idea, the reasoning and belief behind that idea shows you how effective this point of magic is. And as the moon goes into Aries, it's going to apply this change in belief directly for you to understand who you are and who you belong around expressing this truth. And it's going to get even more dramatic and chaotic. So definitely... And uninhibit yourself, get a little loopy, stay to Lulu, and make sure that everything that comes out your mouth is true, true. So you want to feel the Lulu, but speak true, true. Okay, however you manage that. It's not as impossible as you might think. You just need to believe. What do you believe is true? Speak nothing but that. All through this moon in Pisces transit. And I'll see you next magic moon message. Maranatha.